Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this channel ad-free. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike and today we're talking about these pens. These are all Spoke Design pens. I started out with Spoke Design with this pen. This was a Kickstarter pen that is a gel refill pen based on the Signo DX, which is a great line of gel pens, but this really just like classes up the classes up the look and the feel of this one. This is anodized aluminum and titanium and you have these nice cutouts here. Very comfortable pen, really cool magnet cap springy springy clip here good stuff next up was the spoke icon which i bought uh when all of these dropped i was like yeah i gotta get the icon that's the one i think looks the best uh the cool thing about the icon is you have this like nice engraved finial up here with the icon logo you have these really smooth looking lines here on the body and the cap and then you have these cutaways in here which will show the interior sleeve of the pen now that interior sleeve is mix and matchable it comes in a bunch of different colors and you can mix and match that along with the section which not only comes in different colors but also different styles so I have on this one the knurled section which is a very very comfortable section for me there's also one that's got a bit of an hourglass pinch in the middle that was the original section of the icon and then one that has sort of like I don't know sort of a bulge in the middle with some uh, incised uh, ribbing in it that feels pretty nice as well although i I really like this knurling. That is real top notch for me. So I've really enjoyed the icon and uh, these were out of stock for a while. I said, oh, Brad, I got to order some of those when they get back in stock. And Brad Dowdy, the pen addict who is uh, part uh, part of the spoke design company was uh, so just said, hey, Mike, I'll just I'll bring you one. And he, in fact, brought me two. So we're going to talk about these today. Uh, I want to take them one at a time because they are different pens, even though they share a style. So let's start with the full sized spoke axle. This pen is related, obviously, to the rest of the spoke family but unlike the icon these little grooves do not go all the way through they are cosmetic and you can't change anything on the inside it's a little bit less complicated and thus like a little bit less expensive also than the spoke icon which is very reasonably priced i think you'll see down here on the bottom finial you have a uh, uh an anodized spoke logo i think the spoke logo is really good uh, then you have uh, some threads down here so you can thread it. Uh, it's got a threaded posting mechanism. And then you have here titanium section and cap. This is the cap right here. You unscrew that to expose the nib. These are number six Yovo nibs that come in all the standard number six Yovo nib sizes, extra fine up through broad. Maybe he has uh, 1.1s and that sort of thing, but it is for sure that Yovo nibs are very easy to uh, swap between pens, and there are lots of them available out there with custom grinds and different kinds of logos. You can see the spoke logo there is lasered into the pen. I think it's lasered. Oh, maybe it's maybe it's engraved. That actually I think is engraved now that I'm looking at it. Very classy. Uh, and you can also see that the spoke logo is an S which I always forget because I look at it like this and it looks like a, I don't know, a sandwich. So the section of this pen is integrated into the body. There is no, uh, there's nothing to catch your fingers on or anything unless you hold it extremely close to the nib and then you'll be on those little bitty threads there. But I actually find that hard to get the nib to the paper with my hand in the way. So, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not worried about touching those. You also notice there is an O-ring here just at the bottom, just for uh, safety, keeps that, uh, keeps that, that cap on there and secure. It's, it's really pretty good. So this is a very comfortable section. It is 11.4 millimeters, which is, I mean, kind of perfect for me. I like the 10 to 11 ish range and 11.4 is very comfy. And like I said, you can screw this on the back to post the pen and it looks real slick when you post it. You get a very nice symmetry between the section and the cap with this nice blue bit in the middle. Looks good, feels nice in the hand. This does not overweight it or anything. There's nothing, there's not a whole lot of material in the cap, although it is titanium, it does have a little bit of weight. You're not gonna notice it on the back of this pen. Uh, and this pen, I should point out, does take a cartridge, standard international cartridge, or a standard international converter, which is very handy. I really like the converter. Now, if you're like, I don't really care about a converter and I want to stick this pen in my pocket, boy, have I got a pen for you. It's a Spoke Axle S. It is the same in terms of cap and section. The body is just quite a lot shorter than the regular Spoke Axle. So uh, if you want a pen to just like throw in your, your pocket or your purse or what have you, this might be the one for you. Like the its larger uh, cousin, brother? I'm going to say sibling. Like its larger sibling, it does have the spoke logo 
uh, down here on the bottom. It does have a, a, a anodized aluminum uh, body. And this one comes with anodized aluminum section and cap. You can also get this in uh, titanium, but I wanted to have you know a mixture of things to show you, and so Brad gave me one of both, uh, one of each for the titanium and the anodized aluminum. So when you remove the cap here, you'll notice that this is a very short pen. Uncapped, this thing is really only coming in at. Uh, 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 97.1 millimeters, which is under four inches long. It is quite small and I have these big old hands. And so I can jot quick notes with this uncapped and unposted, but I wouldn't want to write for very long. It'll kind of settle right there in the, the, the web of my hand and it'll work pretty well. But for anything longer, I'm going to want to post this on the back. Uh, which I think makes it look really nice. You again get that good symmetry and it makes it much longer. And so it rests very comfortably there on the web of my hand. And um, all of this is the same, you know, widths and diameters as this because very, very similar stuff. Also same Yovo number six nib, small pen, big nib. Gotta love that. All right. So let's look at these next to some other pens, capped and uncapped, and then uh, take a look at a writing sample and talk about some of the things I really like and some of the things I don't necessarily care for as much with these pens. Okay, so here we have the Axel S. We're gonna do these one at a time because they're very different size pens. So here we have the Shown Design Pocket 6, which is a little bitty pocket fountain pen. Then you have the Spoke Design Axel S, the Shown Anniversary pen, which is a slightly larger version of that pen. Um, of his ballpoint, which can be a ballpoint, a fountain pen, or a rollerball, really kind of cool, uh, but about the same length right there. Then you have, of course, the Kaweco Sport, king of pocket pens, and the Gravitas pocket pen. This one's in all brass, but um, there you go. we'll put that on the end there like that. So uh, a nice size for a pocket pen, I think. This one, it's a little bit slimmer than any of its competition here, but it's right in the same kind of size range. Uh, of pocket pens. Some folks will also say like the Pilot Prera belongs in the pocket pen category. I don't really think so, uh, but uh, you know, I'll show it there anyway. So let's take the lids off of these and see how they compare with, uh, their, their, with them being posted. All right, so here are the pins in their posted configurations. And you can see that the Axel S comes in very short compared to a lot of other pocket pins, including the Shown Design Pocket 6, the Kaweco, the Gravitas, and the uh, the other Shown Anniversary uh, ballpoint pen or rollerball in this configuration. This is quite short, but nonetheless, totally long enough to use. I, I don't have any problem using this length of pin at all. Now, if I throw uh, the Pilot Prera in there, you'll see that it actually uh, is about the same length as the rest of these pocket pens. And this is, I think, one of the reasons that people think of the, the Prera as a bit of a pocket pen. So, you know, there's your, there's your size comparison if that's a pen you like to use as a benchmark. Let's put the caps back on here and look at the other axle. Okay, so here is the standard sized axle next to some of the, some of the pens that are in the same kind of size category. We have here the Pilot Prera. This is the axle, uh, rather the icon from Spoke, the Spoke axle, the Shown Design fountain pen, and also the Sailor 1911 standard sized fountain pen. And you can see these are all of a size. We can also throw in a... Uh, a Lamy All-Star, because why not? The All-Star is a fair amount bigger and uh, bulkier than these. So that's kind of why I left it off. It's not really in the same category. So let's take the caps off of these, and I'm not gonna use them or show them posted. I'll show them unposted because they're more likely to use uh, them perhaps unposted. All right, so here they are in their unposted forms, and you can see that unposted, the axle fits in very well with all these pens. The icon is a little bit longer. The uh, the little prayer here is quite a lot shorter. Let's uh, throw this one in here because why not? There we go. That's a, a good bit longer, the all-star. Okay, let's do a little bit of a writing sample and then sort of talk about what I like and what I, I don't care for with these pens. Okay, so this is the spoke axle and it has been sitting around for quite a while with the lid off. So we'll see if it starts up or if it needs some coaxing. Yeah, no problem at all. These Yovo nibs are really very reliable and the cap on this is excellent. I think this O-ring down here really helps to preserve the wetness of the nib. It doesn't let the uh, the nib or the converter dry out and uh, man, started up right away, which was very nice. Let's see how its smaller Axel S sibling does. Yeah, no problem here either. Uh, this is a fine nib. 
on this one, which I kind of prefer in a pocket pen because you never know what you're going to be writing on and a fine nib can be a little bit more reliable on bad papers than a wider nib. So yeah, really nice. And this one's, by the way, just running on a cartridge. Just, uh, I want to say this is probably, it's probably the blue cartridge it came with. Honestly, I just probably popped that right in there with no, uh, no problem. So yeah, it works really nice and it doesn't uh, like this one. It doesn't evaporate or dry out while it's being capped. I've left this in the drawer for sometimes two or three weeks at a time without using it because pocket pens just don't get quite as much use from me as the larger pens do. I'll tend to throw them in a pocket and sometimes I use them and sometimes I don't. Uh, and sometimes I'll use them at the desk and sometimes I don't. So having one that has a really nice reliable cap seal is pretty important. Okay, so let's talk about a few things that uh, I like and a few things that I, I don't really care for with these two pens. So firstly, I think uh, we'll talk about the, the smaller one. This one's just a little bit on the small side for me. It uh, just barely fits my hand and you do need to post it. Now, the reason that I bring that up as a bit of a drawback is that the posting on this pen is not as reliable as I would like it to be. While this dome shape here looks really nice, it also means that when you're trying to screw that on there, sometimes you get like, you get into this wobble because it's like a nice ball joint situation here, like a, like a knee or an elbow or is that a ball joint? Like a shoulder or a hip. And so it like just wants to, to wander around. And so you kind of have to, the trick I do is that I'll put my fingers right here and just sort of like pinch it a little bit to guide it. And sometimes even then I won't quite catch the thread that I want to catch. And I think that might just be because of how the threads go up the sides of this, uh, of the size of this pen right here at the finial. So, uh, you know, I would, uh, I would say that's like, that's my biggest quibble with this pen is that sometimes it's a little bit difficult to post it and you'll want to post it and you want to post it quickly because it's a pocket pen. So it takes some getting used to, but, uh, it, you can get used to it. All right. Here's the other, uh, quibble I have about these pens and that's uh, like a really minor quibble, but on the titanium version, while I love the look of the titanium, I think it's a really sharp look. I can see the seam here. And I think that's because of the O-ring, uh, and the way that these threads are put together. Also, you get a little bit of a squeak, but that's the thing you get with titanium. It's one of those metals that squeaks when you when you try to do that. That's just its deal. So I think that that seam could be a little bit more invisible. There are lots of pens that kind of handle that a little bit better than the uh, than the axle does. I'm not sure why. I don't know exactly how I would fix that, but that's just something like looking at like, mm, all right, well, that tells me where the cap is, which is kind of nice, but also it sticks out a little bit. And then here's the opposite problem with this one. And that's that often when I hand this to people to try out and I hand my pens out to lots of people because that's the kind of guy I am. I want people to use fountain pens and they always open it wrong. They'd be like, mm, okay. And then they take this part off right here, right? They unscrew the body of the pen instead of the cap. And that's because you can't see the cap on there. You can't see where the cap seam is on this one. And there's more area here. This is shorter. And so people assume the shorter thing is the cap. And so without fail, they'll try to open this as if it's the cap and they'll go, Hmm, and then they'll twist this and it'll be okay. But while the black anodization really hides that seam, it might hide it a little too well. So maybe if we switched these over, maybe that wouldn't happen as much. There'd be more of a delineation here, but, uh, you know, what is like a little bit of a, a quibble on this one is maybe a drawback on this one. So, you know, it's a little bit of give and take. Now, things I like about them. This fits in a pocket really well. It doesn't dominate your pocket. It's nice and smooth. I'm not worried about it uh, scratching up things in my pocket, really. And while I've thrown this in with my keys, I try not to do that. I try to put my keys in the other pocket. I haven't gotten any scratches or anything like that. And you can get scratches in anodization, but I, I really haven't picked up any, which is pretty cool. I also think that it looks really nice when it is posted. I don't think this pen is the most attractive thing ever when it's not posted, like when the cap is when the cap is when the cap is capped, but when it's posted, I think this looks great. You get this great symmetry between the black and the gunmetal. It looks really nice. And the same thing with this, although I think the symmetry is a little bit better between the section and cap and the body on the larger version of the pen, but also posted, this looks real good. Like that's a good looking pen really nice and it really jumps out and 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 I dig the look. I, I like all these design details that are thrown in there by Spoke and Brad and them and I think it works really well. 
Okay, so there you go. Oh, the other thing I like, uh, I already mentioned it, but uh, I really like how well the caps seal. I haven't had either of these pins dry out even a little bit, and that's been real good. I got these at the Atlanta Pin Show, and I've had them inked ever since, and they've never dried out, and that's been months away. So yeah, good job on all those like little fit and finish details there, Spoke. Uh, I like what y'all have done here. All right, so thank you very much, Brad, for letting me get these for a review. I appreciate that. If you like what you see here, go over to SpokeDesign.com link in the description tell brad and them that i sent you uh and uh you know i won't, won't get you anything but uh it's nice for people to know that people saw a thing and they're like i like that thing i'm gonna purchase that thing from you it's uh it helps out little you know uh reviewers like me also be sure to uh like this video subscribe and uh leave me a comment down the bottom tell me what you think about these tell me what is your pocket pen of choice like if you're not going to carry an axel s like what are you, what are you throwing in there are you using one of these one of these little guys that I was showing before. What's uh, what's your what's your pocket pen of choice? All right, I will see y'all later in another video. Peace out.